yesterday afternoon, I don't know if you heard me mention it, it sort of was a bit of a side comment, and then I thought about it a bit more, and um, I thought, no, actually this is something worth homing in on. We're spending a lot of time looking at triangles. Now, it's a very natural question to ask, like, when am I gonna, when am I gonna do this, okay? Uh, and the answer is, kind of, all the time, and kind of never. Let me explain. This is trigonometry, right? Trigonometry. The word trigonometry kind of tells you what it's about. When you've got something with a metry on the end, like optometry or geometry, right? Does anyone know what that metry bit on the end means? Hmm. I'll give you a bit of a clue. There's another word we have, I think I heard it, another word we have, which is the, has the same root, right? Which we use for our system of course, talking about centimeters and meters and what's that system? It's the metric system, which is another way of saying measurement. Now, measurement's one part of maths, but it's not the only one, okay? Now, have a look at the front of the word. Tri, gone. Huh. Uh, what does tri mean? Tri, <laughs> three. And gone means angle. Which is why when we talk about polygons, poly means many. So polygons are just anything with lots of angles. Okay? So in this table, what I want to do is I want to gather together all of what we know so far. It's not complete yet but it'll give you an idea of how everything we know fits together. At the moment, we've been dealing with two main kinds of triangles. The first ones are where you have right angles. Okay. Now, I've already drawn one of these triangles on the board. I've been very careful not to call them right angle triangles because that's a right angle triangle, but Here's a triangle that's not right angled, right? But if I put a right angle in it, like say this, right? And if you know that length, say for instance, the height, right? You actually know a lot more about this triangle because of that right angle, even though the corners, none of them are right angles. So if you have right angles at all, for instance, we know how to find area, right? If you've got some right angles there, if you know some right angles, the area is really easy to get. What's the formula? Half base times height, very good. Okay. But what we've been trying to do is expand with trig, because that doesn't have any trig in it, where you don't have right angles. Last week, we realized through a bit of um, construction and mucking around that even if you don't have a right angle in your triangle anywhere at all, we developed a new formula for finding the area. Do you remember what it is? Starts with a half? Half A, B. Very good. And in fact, that B sine C is really just the height. You just have to work it out with tree. All right, but we actually know a lot more about triangles and how to work things out. For instance, if you've got a triangle with right angles in it, and what you want is to find side lengths. Okay? If you've got a right angle triangle like this, and I gave you some lengths like this and this, okay, if you had right angles and you wanted to find side lengths, what would you do to this thing? You'd go Pythagoras, right? Which is, what is Pythagoras again? A squared plus B squared, plus B squared, B squared equals C squared, right? So we would use, we would appeal to Pythagoras. But now we've learned you can actually find side lengths even when you don't have a right angle triangle. Yesterday we introduced this sine rule thing. That's where our, our heading is. Okay? And there were two ways to write the sine rule. If what you want to find is side lengths, then the first thing I'm going to write is a side length like this. Little a, just like over here, right? It's the length I'm trying to find. So if I divide that by sine a, because it is the sine rule after all, that should be equal to b on sine b, right? And that also equals to, uh, I've run out of space, but it's also equal to c on sine c. However, usually you don't need to use all three of them, even though that's true. You only need to use two of them and then you can make an equation. Now, the last little bit we've got here is 
if you don't want area, or if you don't want sine lace, there's one other thing you can measure in a triangle, and it is the angles, right? You, you, can, you can measure the perimeter, but it comes from the sine lace, right? Okay, now again, remember, let's have a look at this guy up here. See this triangle here? It's right angled. Because it's right angled, you can find out any of the angles you want inside that triangle. What would you use? Sokotoa. Again, you'd use, yeah, Sokotoa basically. In fact, let's just write that up here. Students often have the of There are lots of really good ones there. So, Sokotoa, right? For example, in this triangle up here, if I called this angle in the corner feet up, You've got a 7, you've got a 24. What ratio would you use here? You'd use 10 because it's opposite on adjacent. So you'd say 10 theta equals 7 on 24. In other words, you're using the trigonometric ratios in their original intended form. Okay? But then we learnt yesterday, again, this sign rule that we proved, that we created, we can use it for angles as well. All you have to do is take this thing and... Flip it. Turn it upside down. Just flip it upside down and you'll have, uh, no, right come. for example, sine A on A. Right? It's the same formula, but if you flip it upside down, suddenly you have changed the subject and now it's much easier to find angles. You just sort of save yourself a step. Now this table is not quite complete. We're almost there. But I want you to understand, this is how it all fits together. Right? You've learned all of this stuff. You added on this fairly recently, and then really, really recently, we put this in place as well. Okay, so I know it starts to become a bit. Well, I've no, I know so much stuff about triangles and get mixed up. I hope this table will help you understand where you can use it and why. So, how do we use this? Have a look first, based on our table, right? What are you being asked to find? What's the unknown? It's a length, fantastic. So when I look at my scheme of all this knowledge that I know, I can see this is where I'm going to go first. Okay, this is what I'm after. I can use this to help me here. But you remember, this A and this A, this B and this B, they're there intentionally, they're not there coincidentally, right? Why is that important which one is matched up with which? Why does that matter? Because of the included Okay, so this is the one where it's not so much about the included angle, which was this one, it's about the opposite angles, right? So for example, you want to find x, okay? Which angle is it opposite? The unknown angle. Yeah, I, I actually don't know what this angle is. It's over here, and that's really important. A lot of students will look at this, they'll say, two angles, two sides, I'll just put them into the formula, because I can see them there, right? But you can actually notice there's something additional I have to find out. Can you tell me what that angle is? Oh, it's, yeah, yeah, very good. So, uh, 34 plus 53 is 87. 87. So if you subtract 87 from 180, you'll get 93. Now I have the information I need for that. The other length is opposite this angle. Okay. So I've identified everything I need. What am I going to write? What's the first thing I'm going to write? The thing I want first, x on, yeah, very good, so I had to find this angle, and then it's equal to the other pairing, yeah, very good, fantastic, okay, so you're starting to get the rhythm of this, right, you can see by the way, um, do you remember when I told you about bearings questions, I gave you some principles for bearings questions, one of the principles was, read the question carefully, if you don't read it carefully, you don't know what you're looking for, and then you don't know what to use. And then secondly, the other hint was, we'll draw the diagram. I know they give you diagrams, but do you see how much I relied on my diagram to actually solve this accurately? Like I had to um, put constructions on it, draw all over it, so I made sure that I matched things up correctly. Can we find out what the answer is? Yeah. Okay, let's get a number. Um, can I get one decimal place, please? 16.4? <laughs> can I get some agreement on that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Calculate this shit now. Wonderful. Um, last thing before we leave, sense check. 
sense check. Now remember I told you with these, you can do like a regular sense check and say, oh, does this number is in the ballpark, but you can do an even better sense check by looking at this number and comparing it to this one. 16.4. Hang on. Hmm. Yeah, so, if, you guys, if you guys are in the AP3s and I'm walking around and I see some of you in the middle of your deck going like this, I'm, 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 I'm so bad. Um, I'll do it just to make me laugh, okay? Just to make sure. Does it make sense? Look, you've got this side opposite a small angle and you've got this side opposite a bigger angle. Is it what you expected? Yeah. Yeah, checks out. Thumbs up.